It's Care Providers of Minnesota's The Inside Scoop, featuring your advocacy team, Patty Cullen, Toby Pearson, Aaron Bowie, and Todd Brooks. This week's host, Patty Cullen. Hi, welcome to this week's issue of Inside Scoop. Once again, I am the substitute star of Inside Scoop because the lobbyists are at the Capitol. Today is, I'm Patty Cullen, President and CEO of Care Providers in Minnesota. Today is the second committee deadline. All bills need to be out of the policy committees of both the House and the Senate to technically stay alive during this session. So your lobbying team has been over there today as well as every other day and night this week on issues affecting um, you and, and your businesses. So a couple of highlights from this week. First, thank you to all of you that came today at the legislature. Record turnout, fabulous meetings, and the perfect timing because there were a lot of bills up after you met with your legislators and I believe as a result of your advocacy and the hard work of our lobbying team, we were able to get some changes into bills that we've been waiting to do for the last few weeks. So that was the first thing that happened. Um, yesterday, the Senate Republican Caucus delineated their spending targets for the rest of the year and their priorities. And in the elder care area, um, and we had met earlier with the Senate Majority Leader, Paul Gazelka from the Nisswa area, and he had said in advance they were going to put away some money just for elder care issues and to have that a separate issue going forward. And $5 million is their target. <clears throat> and you say, wow, that's great. That seems like a lot of money. Well, on the House side, they have a bill, um, the House Democrats who lead the caucus in the House, they're the majority caucus. They have not delineated specifically how much money they're going to spend on elder care. Um, what they have right now is a bill that costs about $30 million in general fund money and $10 million in fees. So $40 million and $5 million are not the same numbers. So we're going to have some interesting negotiations moving forward. So what else happened? They've been hearing the, the governor's budget bills, but not really taking action, just setting them aside. So my assumption is that the negotiations on the nursing facility cuts will happen after the policy committee deadlines because they're really budget cut issues. So they will be translated in the third deadline, which is going to be in April. And we will have time to figure out what we need to negotiate on to get as much of those reductions to nursing facilities removed. On the elder care issues, which is primarily what we're calling assisted living licensure and some of the accompanying requirements, we have whittled it down to two bills now. So it's going to be a little bit easier to track through the process. So on the House side, House File 90, authored by Jennifer Schultz, is the lead bill that is being negotiated. It's being heard in, I believe, Judiciary today as one of the last stops. And so after this committee, we'll figure out what the fiscal note is of that bill for sure. And that's when the, the real discussions will start on what do we absolutely need? How much can the fees be increased to pay for what the general fund isn't? And what do we need to set aside because there isn't any money? So that's the House side. On the Senate side, um, Senate File 8 will be the ultimate bill and we were successful last night in getting an amendment on to pull out some of the more problematic sessions, sections of the bill. But as we told everyone at the testimony table as well as in meetings, we will continue to meet and negotiate and try to get as much compromise as we can on this bill. Knowing, however, that we're not going to be able to drive a new licensure system by fee increases, that there has to be some general fund appropriation and as we move ahead there are some things that the consumers want and that the agencies want that frankly just won't be able to be funded um, in this session but we do think it's important to get something in the books right now so that we don't have to relive like groundhog day the same discussions the same concerns for one more session so that is our message to the leadership and our message to you is we will be passing some type of assisted living licensure um, that goes into effect in 2020 
And so that's this week's Inside Scoop. Um, what will happen next week is there'll be kind of the comparison of what's going on, and then they're going to head into a spring break um, in early April, and that's the opportunity for you all to meet with your legislators in your home districts, especially if you have assisted living. Bring them on over, have them take a look at what you do so they know this foreign thing um, that is unlicensed, okay, I'm saying that in air quotes, if you could see my hands, um, is, is really um, doing good services in your local communities. Um, thank you and have a good weekend.